this is my way of just doing it because I can just, as long as I've got all my measurements to hand, my overalls, I can knock one of these up in half an hour and have enough information for me to go on and build this whole entire thing without absolutely visually correct. If I zoomed in in every position, it was correct details. You don't really need that. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This one is part three of a three part series. I'm going to be showing you how to design an understairs pull out drawer unit. This drawer unit could be used for anything. It'd be used for shoes, for general storage, anything you like. And I'm going to be showing you how to design it from start to finish using the free SketchUp software. If you haven't watched part one and part two, go ahead and watch those in your own time. Part one was the construction. Part two was the installation. The part three is the design. So you have everything that you're going to need to know in order to design, make and install your units from start to finish. Enjoy the video. OK, guys, so this is the opening, OK, and this is just my measuring up. So when I went to site, I took my overalls. So up here, that's the tip of the opening. So from basically this point to this point to this point to this point is the actual opening size. So I've taken my overalls 999 from tip to the floor, 1251 from tip to, I guess, I guess this tip and 171 from this tip to the floor. And then the width is 934 overall. But then we've got the skirting that runs um, through, which makes this 913. I'm going for around 60 mil at the bottom void, and I'm going for around 30 void both sides and the top. I need to look at my drawings just to see if that's correct, but we'll go through that in just a bit. We need to leave voids because ultimately we want our trims to be the same width all the way around if possible. So allowing the right voids is key really. So here we go. We've got my original sketch up drawing. Okay. So I drew in my points. So if we get the measuring tool, tape measure here, and I go from up here, which is the tip down to the floor, we have 999 and that's what I told you a minute ago. Again, we'll do from this tip to this tip, 934 and that is what my drawing is showing. Let me go from this tip to this tip, 171 and then from this tip to the top again is 1248. Um, it's a little, it's a mil or two difference from my actual drawings but we're there or thereabouts. So it doesn't really matter 100% if there's a mill, give or take. I literally go on site and I just take my tape measure and I measure from the tip to the floor, from the tip to the floor, from the new post of the staircase to the wall and from the new post of the staircase to the skirting. And then I just roughly get my length of the top. Again, in my drawings, it says 1251. But when I typed it in with my calculations using SketchUp, it's saying 1248. So we're there or thereabouts. It's absolutely fine. And what I was saying earlier about getting voids right is that I want to have my trims. My trims are going to go from the inside of the carcass to the wall. We've got 48 mil here. I put 38 mil here, I don't know why, but I'm trying to get my void similar. There we go, we got 48 mil again. I think I increased this anyway. Um, so when I came to make, this was 48, this was 48, and then I just made this one 48 too. This particular top trim is painted both sides, so there's no scribing as such in the width. This one was scribable in the width, and so is this one. These three, so the sides and the top, are just sitting on top of the actual frame, okay? They're going to be flush with the inside of the carcass, and they're going to be just basically glued onto the front. Simple as. This bottom plimp detail is going to be flush with the carcass. It's going to be stepped back because that's the way I like to do my details. So that is my voids. I basically just allowed enough void top and side to make sure that my trims are the same, okay? So just make sure of that. Um, also, the dotted line is representing my fascia, okay? So my fascia is inside the carcass by three mil. So that is giving me my three mil gaps because the trims are gonna be flush with the inside of the carcass. I need to get my three mil gap somehow. And yeah, so just by stepping that fascia in three mil, 
from the inside gives me the three mil I need. My fascia is also running down to the bottom of the carcass here. This is the way I'm doing it on this particular unit. Um, but if you wanted your trims to be glued on to the front of your unit all the way around, then this trim could have been flushed to the inside just like the rest. And then the fascia, you'd, I would have had a dotted line here, three mil in. But instead, I've got my dotted line here, which re is representing my fascia. That's just my detail. What we will do is we'll draw this out again. Maybe if I just, let's see if we can just um, paste it. There we go. I've just done another one there. So what that means is I can have one to the side of me and this one I can play around with. Let's see if we can do it this way rather than drawing one out completely, okay? So what I've done there is I've just deleted the inside. Um, it's just a little shortcut so I didn't have to draw it all out again. What I've got here is my overalls. Let's just colour it in maybe. If I just colour it in a certain colour, dark grey, okay? Dark grey, dark grey, dark grey. And then you can just see the actual opening. I do this skirting dark grey also. So this is basically the opening, okay? And then we got our unit within. What I then do once I've just worked out my voids and I've drawn my line in, by drawing your line in, you can just simply get a tape measure tool, come across, let's just say it was 50, type in 50, enter. I'll do it once more, just click it on the edge, drag it down, type in 50, enter. Okay, and then once you've got that line, you can go to your pencil and you can just draw it in, okay? And you can draw it in, as whatever you want to do. Right, well, I'm just going to undo those now and do draw a line. But that is simply how you do it, okay? So what I'm going to do, quick shortcut really is press this offset tool this one I'm gonna click on the edge bring it in press 18 enter that gives us a 18 mil border I can then draw in the way I want my sides to one run through so there we go I'm just gonna draw the way they're running through I'm gonna have the sides running through like so so this is only 2D at the moment, as you can see, but what we can do is cheat. And this is what basically I generally do. So I don't actually make 100% true representations. They're basically visuals, but it's enough for me to get all my measurements that I need and it will be for you to also. We can just cheat here. We can just get the push and pull tool and push that in. So if I click it and push forward, um, on my drawing it says this alcove is 862 deep. I'm making this unit 800. Okay, so I'm just going to go 800, enter, and that is just kind of cheating. And if I kind of move it around, you can just see how I've pushed that back 800-ish. It hasn't gone through to the back because I've drawn this in deep enough, but yeah, it's just kind of, kind of giving you the illusion as such. So now we've got our unit floating in there now. And just by doing the push and pull tool on our border surround. So that is giving you the illusion that the unit is just floating in space now. So that's good. And it makes everything 3D. So let's draw in the carcass now. That's the next stage. The runners that I'm using are giant. They are 20 mil thick. So what I will do is get my tape measure tool, click out 20, do the same on this side, 20. I'm gonna leave 10 mil gap between the drawer and the carcass bottom. So enter 10, there we go. Yeah, what did I do over here? I think I just did 20. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same here. Come in 20. Right, so the way I did this, I decided not to have it so it, it was pointy at the top. So let's just see what I did here from the bottom of the drawer to the top. 600, I rounded it off to 600. So if I get my dotted line, and come up 600 enter and then we could just simply get the pencil tool at the top and we can draw those in let me go over the pencil tool and that is drawn in so now i can get rid of guides delete all guides there we go so now we have that again Remember a minute ago we push and pulled the actual surround of the carcass, 800 in. Um, I'm going to just push this in. I made this draw 780 deep, I believe. Um, so I'm just going to push, get the push and pull tool and push it in 780. 
and there we go so now we've got a draw floating in that space again it's all illusions and you can see inside the carcass now and you can see around the carcass but it's just an illusion using the push and pull tool and it's all you need really because why does it have to be perfect you're only showing if you want to show the customer this you only need to show them the front and if you need to take measurements you can we'll go over the measurements in just a bit okay so the sides run all the way through as you can see here the sides run through to the front to the back and front to the back and then as you can see here this is the front of the drawer it's going in between the side and in between the side but to the top okay so what we need to do is just get our tape measure tool and click on there 18 so we're using 18 um, thick material 18 enter i'm gonna get my tape measure tool as well because we have got a rebate here as well i'm gonna draw six million so if i come up six enter and so we can draw our rebate in okay so without over complicating it let's not draw the rebate in for now but there is a rebate rebate detail here okay we're not going to draw that in you can see what i've done and let's just draw the bottom in all the way across okay there's only so much i can show you in this actual sketch up um tutorial but i'm just showing you the basics okay how to just a shortcut really how to design a unit for yourself we can get the pencil tool if we want and we can just click here and then run it all the way to the end where it, and then just where it says on edge then we'll stop it and that's showing the sides running through and again here we could do that here as well we could do that same here as well on edge like so so we can also just get the tape measure tool here 18 enter 18 enter draw that in and there we go and that is showing you the front in between the sides so what I've just shown you here is enough to take all your measurements because remember we said this drawer was going to be 780 deep so we've got the height and we've got the depth that's all we need for that component we've got this component over here we know it's 780 deep and we can take our measurements here we know it's 18 mil thick and we can take a measurement from this point to this point okay so we can take all these measurements by doing so you simply get your tape measure tool click there and then click down the bottom you can also just do a freehand sketch okay so what i'll generally do is just either print this up and then just draw my measurements on it once it's printed up i can just go okay well uh, that one there that is 594 then draw it on my picture draw it on my printout or you can go into dimensions and just click there and there and move it over but i find that just makes it a little bit busy so what i generally do i get it to this stage and then i just take my measurements, all the measurements I need with my tape measure tool. Um, again, let's just do one here. Let's just do the carcass side. Okay, so the tip to the bottom is 896. And then the lower part of the tip to the bottom is 880. Okay, so they're all the measurements we need. So if we just move across, we need to draw in a shelf here, all right? It's simple. I mean, you just want to work out where you're going to position it first. I came up 362. Um, so I can just use my tape measure tool and type in 362, enter. And then obviously it's 18 mil shelf, press 18, enter. Get my pencil, come across and then draw this one in also. And there we go. We've got our shelf drawn in there also. And then I will just get my tape measure tool because remember we've got the printout printed out. That's 450 to the long part of the tip and then 430 to the shorter part. Okay. Um, so, and that is it really. I mean, everything is there now um, because we can work out the depths from this. We could draw in the rebate as well. I think I actually went bigger in the end with my rebate. I think I went maybe about 12 mil with a six mil tongue to have more surface area for my screws um, but this is everything that you need so if I was going to do the backing for example of this carcass I've got my tape measure tool I could just measure from the front can't I so I draw a triangle out on my piece of paper and then I'd write 1168 and then from here to here is a 121 
and then from here to here is 874 from here to here is 9 is 896 and that is all I do um, again this is basically a visual for you to take your measurements you can go a little bit further and draw your measurements on it and do it a little bit more differently but that is the way I like to do it so one more thing I do think I want to show you is the fascia I showed you a moment ago that the fascia is going three mil within the carcass so let's get rid of all the guides delete guides and I simply want to get my tape measure tool remember I was saying three mil in so I'm just going to press three enter bring it in press three enter three enter and there we go um, again if you are having this trim on the front just like the rest and you're not stepping it in then you want to create another three mil gap here all right so you you just do the same three enter you don't need to fill that in with a pencil you can just take your measurements off it a measurement with your tape measure so you click it once there and then that's one 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 two the reason i'm zooming out is to get from one place to another without using the hand tool up here if i click the hand tool i can move it around but it's a little bit longer because you're always changing tools so what I do, it doesn't matter what you've got it selected on. Let's just say I'm in this corner, okay? I'm gonna zoom out in this corner with my mouse in the same place, move my mouse where I want it to be, and then I zoom in where I want it to be. Okay, again, I'll zoom out where I am, move to where I want to be, then zoom in. And it's a simple way of just using the scroll wheel on your mouse and um, to do the in and out this is why it's going out and in in different positions so there we go that's how i do the face show it's really really simple i guess this isn't fully comprehensive this this guide it's just showing you a, a shortcut in how to create the illusion for you to take all your measurements from oh one thing i did forget to say is angles so up here in your tools you've got lots of things obviously protractor is angles so you just click on your protractor you go to the tip of your angle because you want to know the angle click it once then move it to the anywhere it can be anywhere along one plane all right let's just click it there then move your mouse and click it once more and at the bottom of your screen where i'm moving my mouse it says 48.4 okay so we can round that up to 48 and most saws do 48 which is quite handy um, so that's how I take my angles. Um, another question you're probably asking is, okay, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of all my guides also so you can see what I'm doing. How do I get the length of this tip to this tip? Okay, so this angle here and this angle are going to be the same. They're going to be 48 degrees, okay? So I am simply just going to get my tape measure tool. So what I would generally do is draw this component out this shape on a bit of paper not the whole component just the front view of that component a weird kind of like triangular kind of shape weird shape i don't even know what it is <laughs> anyway um i would then get my tape measure i'll click on the tip i'll then run it all the way down there we go we've got 1120 escape to release that you could do the same this way as well from that tip it's going to be the same 1120 okay so that's how i get my overalls okay of one component so i'd go in the workshop with that drawing drawn out i'd have this crudely drawn out front view this component just showing the shape i'd write 48 degrees on the tip and then i'd draw a line here on my component and then here on the component and i'll write in 1120 or wherever it was and then i'll draw another line another a line on my drawing and like right 1120 remember this way of doing it is my shortcut method it works for me I'm not saying it's right or wrong I'm not saying it's right for everyone and yeah I know there is other ways of doing it you don't need to tell me but this is my way of just doing it because I can just as long as I've got all my measurements to hand my overalls I can knock one of these up in half an hour and have enough information for me to go on and build this whole entire thing without absolutely visually correct if I zoomed in in every position it was correct details you don't really need that as long as we know the depth okay of the unit again even if we didn't push and pull it the right 
amount it doesn't really matter because it's only one measurement we know that every part of this the sides are going to be 780 uh, the shelf is going to be 780 yeah and this carcass i said was 800 so this side and this top and this side and this bottom they're all going to be 800 so it's not an important detail to draw on here so there we go guys i think that is it if i have missed anything let me know but i hope that's kind of clarified everything generally when i make a wardrobe or a carcass i allow 70 at the bottom sorry 60 so or 50 i think i was trying to minimize what i left and also these were 48 so i kept it similar that's why that's 50. generally i use i i do 60 at the bottom and i like my plinth detail to be stepped in so there we go guys i hope you enjoyed that remember we have got a membership so if you feel like supporting me and the channel because everything takes time and effort everything i do i don't earn a lot on youtube whatsoever it's pittance so any donations that you can put in that'd be fantastic um and this is why we got the membership because i with the membership i do give priority replies to any messages you may have for example if you go oh i don't know how to work this can you help me i will aim to get to you within an hour or two of you messaging if you are a member that's the perks of being a member with me. So there you go. All done. Hope you enjoyed it. Do me a favor, guys. Let me know in the comments before you go what video you preferred. Part one, part two, part three. Did you like the making, the installation, or the design? Or did you like each individual video as much as each other? So leave a comment if you can. Let me know for future feedback so I can make more content like this. One more thing before I go, we do have a membership. So if you want to support me and the channel and everything I do here to give you free content, feel free to join our membership and support the channel. Other than that, guys, have a great Friday. I'll see you next Friday. Take it easy. Ciao for now.